Thank you, Martha. Um, I must say, following on this of Cubela's is always her, but yes, okay. So, um, assistive products are used external to the body and assist to maintain or improve function and through that well being. So, assistive products also prevent secondary complications and they can be specially produced like a prosthesis or generally available like a smartphone. It covers a wide range of products from wheelchairs and crutches through spectacles, hearing aids and incontinence products to software and computer based technologies. The need for assistive products is not limited to the relatively small group of people traditionally labeled the disabled. People living with chronic conditions, the elderly and those with temporary health conditions, such as a lower limb fracture, all might need assistive products. For example, a person with emphysema might need a wheelchair for mobility, and many older people need spectacles, walking and hearing aids. This takes assistive products out of the realm of rehabilitation to the overarching one of global health. Assistive products cut across services and systems as it helps improve health outcomes for improved function, prevention of secondary complication, and improving access to health services and information. You can read health information if you have special software. You can access the healthcare facility or venue where vaccinations are provided if you have a wheelchair. You can prevent urinary tract infections with appropriate incontinence products or pressure ulcers through pressure care products. You can ward off depression because you can get out of bed and out of your house. Next slide, please. However, assistive products improve more than health outcomes. It helps people flourish. When individuals flourish, you generally get positive upstream effects on the social determinants of health, such as education, employment, living conditions, and material circumstances. Access to appropriate assistive products improve a person's ability to participate and achieve success in education, employment, community, social, and civic life. It opens doors to self actualization and inclusive development. Next slide, please. Uh, I think you've skipped the slide. Chanel, can we just go one back, please? It's taking me back to that slide if I go back, so I don't think. Oh, okay, is... sorry, then we've lost the slide. Just stay here for a moment um, because what I want to say is important, even if you've lost the slide. Assistive products are essential to achieving the sustainable development goals. Countries should provide appropriate population level access to assistive products, starting with the World Health Organization list of 50 essential product, products and moving on to context specific needs. Without this, the underlying principle of equity that runs through the Sustainable Development Goals are negated. Assistive products also have the potential for cross-cutting impact, as already shown earlier when talking about the social determinants of health. Thank you, then you can continue. Next slide, yeah. So a clinical example of improved economic, social and emotional life for an appropriate assistive product is provided by Tabu. He says, I love the prosthesis. I mean, it's my life. I walk my dogs, which is something I like to do. I do sports. I have a successful business. Some of the credit is due to the prosthesis. I have created a company that is getting bigger. I make the best leather bags. I have four employees who support eight kids and their spouses. I attempted suicide after I lost my leg. I could not accept myself. The prosthesis has helped me emotionally. It made me come out of my bubble. When people comment on this beautiful leg, you end up finding disability being a cool thing. Next slide, please. Okay, um, we've got a bit of a problem here. I apologize, but this isn't my final slide. So I'm just going to um, ask you, Chanel, to just leave it here. And I'm just going to talk uh, without slides and try to be as clear as possible. Okay, so, um, but finishing from going on from that, what was said about what Tabu said there, is the very important thing of an assistive product having to be appropriate if you want to achieve these outcomes. So giving something instead of the right thing is a waste of resources. The same way that I might be able to walk in shoes two sizes too big, but not walk properly, I will not be able to function with an assistive device too big, too small, or in other ways not suitable to my bodily and environmental requirements. 
functionality and safety are compromised. The risk for secondary complications increases and in worst case scenarios, death can follow. Economically providing an inappropriate device makes little sense. The above challenges such as loss of function and sec secondary complications should already make this clear. I use a further example of quite an expensive device. It is, by the way, the device that the user two slides earlier used. A microprocessor prosthetic knee can cost upwards of 500,000 Rand. Our immediate reaction might be, no, this is too expensive. There are cheaper knees on the market. Yes, there are cheaper knees on the market, but the microprocessor knee comes with a six year free of charge maintenance package. No other knees have that, and most of the other knees must be replaced after three to four years. So now you pay for two knees in the same period that you pay for the one that is more expensive, and you pay for maintenance on the cheaper options. You also compromise on function and safety. Studies showed a significant cost, cost saving due to not needing medical interventions after falls when using microprocessor knees. One study, sorry Chanel, it's, it's the, you've got the wrong slides with you. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, so just, so just hang on where you were. Okay. Um, we will get to that. Um, just, or if you if you want to stop screen sharing for a moment, that's also fine. Um, sorry. Okay. So one study showed that with microprocessor knees, um, twenty only twenty three people were hospitalized after falls when they used microprocessor knees, whereas people who didn't use microprocessor knees, one hundred and forty six were hospitalized after falls. So that you can imagine the cost saving coming in there. So economic benefits of microprocessor knees are comparable to that of total knee replacements. We do not often argue about the cost of a total knee replacement. So why do we argue about the cost of an external knee replacement? With this, I'm not saying the expensive product is always the most appropriate. I'm saying we need to identify the most appropriate product, whether it's the cheaper or the more expensive one. And this will be taken further in the next presentation by Lupubu. So one of the things that we need to do for global health in Africa to improve is to acknowledge the importance of the role of assisted products. Unfortunately, we are still a long way off from that. The Africa Health Strategy, with its vision of an integrated, inclusive and prosperous Africa, free from its heavy burden of disease, disability and premature death, clearly shows our colours. Disability is consigned to a negative outcome the strategy seeks to free Africa from. If I was sure this reference to disability meant that environmental barriers must be removed and assistive products provided to facilitate equal participation for persons with bodily impairments, I would have rejoiced. However, unfortunately, I suspect disability, as used in this document, refers to bodily impairments and not the broader issues, as introduced by Martha earlier through the framework of the International Classification of Functioning Disability and Health. I come to this conclusion because the strategy does not once use the word rehabilitation. It does not refer to rehabilitation at all. It does not refer to provision of assistive products or to the removal of environmental barriers. The strategy devotes itself to preventative and curative care in a medical approach to service delivery rather than a bro broader biopsychosocial approach. Global health requires a biopsychosocial approach. We will not rid the continent from disability through trying to cure and prevent every impairment. It is simply not possible, especially as advances in healthcare save the lives of people with diseases or injuries from which they would have previously died, but now leave them impaired. We need to decrease disability through inclusion, adapting environments and providing appropriate assistive products. So, South Africa developed very inclusive law and policy just after 1994, including a progressive constitution that protects the rights of citizens with disabilities. However, later documents such as the National Development Plan, which focuses on accessing opportunities, is silent about persons with disabilities. Thank you, Chanel. Um, without this and, and assistive products, and without assistive products, some South Africans cannot access opportunities open to them. They will be left behind. 
South Africa has only one document on the provision of assistive products. The guidelines on the provision of mobility assistive devices in the public health care sector dated 2005. According to the 2016 Framework and Strategy for Rehabilitation Service Provision in South Africa, these guidelines should have been revised by 2017 and implemented by 2019. Nothing has happened in that regard. In fact, we have moved backwards. The National Wheelchair Tender, a comprehensive document with a large enough choice to allow the provision of appropriate wheeled mobility devices to all users, have just lapsed. Unfortunately, this is not the exception, but rather the norm. As we know, policies are seldom implemented. Furthermore, cross-sectional collaboration regarding assistive pro product provision is challenged and fragmented, with the Department of Health, Department of Education, NGOs and DPOs all providing assistive product services in silos. Where products are provided, it is often a cheap basic product that cannot assist the user to achieve the functionality required to compete with peers. For instance, four-wheel folding and rigid frame wheelchairs will not allow function in the area where the Amabumbani, introduced earlier by Prof. Miji, live. However, there are wheelchairs on the market that will allow them to function. This, if you get them, give them a wheelchair that they can't function with, you cause marginalization and poor material circumstances with its negative consequences on the social determinants of health, such as poor housing, nutritional challenges, community violence, drug abuse, and so on. So now you can move on, but the next slide is again not exactly what it should be. So um, in conclusion, one of the elements to pay attention to if we want to move towards global health in Africa is the provision of appropriate assistive products. An appropriate assistive product can mean the difference between disease and health, functioning and disability, equity or injustice, illiteracy or education, chronic poverty or employment. This an important ingredient in the mix that can improve global health. Thank you very much. I am handing over to my colleague, um, Lepiwu, who will explore assistive product service delivery in South Africa at the hand of the example of prosthetic services. Thank you, Chanel.